the Joint Parliamentary Assembly of the African, Caribbean and Pacific States along with the European Union is holding their 42nd session in Maputo this past week. The European Union is pushing across the post Cotonou Agreement. The previous agreement had the African, Caribbean and Pacific states enjoy the power of numbers, 79 of them to be exact. The European Union is uncomfortable with the solidarity that exists between the African, Caribbean and Pacific states. So, the European Union has won over the ambassadors of SCP in Brussels and the relevant ministers of trade and foreign affairs to deliver a post Cotonou agreement that splits the African, Caribbean and Pacific Parliament into three. The African Parliament, the Caribbean Parliament and the Pacific Parliament. The SCP members of Parliament will not take this quietly. They are demanding their space as overseers of the executive, demanding that their role as people's representatives should be respected. Namely, Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific. These regional parliamentary assemblies should work to complement the new JPA and vice versa. These novelties and the changed context, including some actors wanting to do away with the JPA entirely, have been an opportunity to review the way the JPA has been working and to see which part of our working methods should be reformed. The post Cotonou arrangement also targets the dissolution of the existing committees the Committee on Political Affairs, the Committee on Social and Environmental Affairs. And these committees have been providing supervisory roles over the Bureau and over other processes for the Joint Parliamentary Assembly. The Honorable Lamini from Iswatini makes a point that even if you are to split the regional assemblies, at least the committees should be retained. Uh, I would still insist, Mr. President, that the regions must have um, the committees because that is where, and I don't mean ad hoc committees, I mean the, uh, the committees as, they, as we know them uh, currently. And I say this, Mr. President, because most of the work does come from the committees. And if we have no committees, if we only have ad hoc committees, then our work will not be as efficient as, as it is currently. Um, so I propose that we, 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 we retain the committees in the regions. For example, the Pacific may not have the, 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 the strength in numbers that are needed to have a solid committee. However, if you look in the uh, African region, we can still have committees because the numbers are, are different. Uh, maybe the same for, for the Caribbean. But I, I, I simply want to propose, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, that we, we retain the committees in the regions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairperson, for this opportunity. Um, I'm new in this process, but I have had opportunity to consult with my other colleagues who have been it for a long time. We have discussed the issue of doing away with the committees or, or separate and then separating the union. It, the whole reason why we came together was to have, because we realized that there is a lot of good and advantage in having a union. So to, to, to divide the various regions is actually divide and rule. And the question is, and, and we also know that when you decide to change rules and procedures, the question should be, what is the mischief you're trying to cure? And what is the intention of making those changes? 
The intention of making these changes from all discussions that I've had with my colleagues is that it only serves to divide the union and to weaken the African, the Caribbean and the Pacific uh, uh, Union. That is all it is achieving. They, they, there isn't a clear justification why this should happen. It, can only, it cannot also be said that the decision can be made uh, and, and that we have to endorse it. I don't think that's possible. So I agree with my colleagues from um, Dalamini, from Enswati, and also uh, uh, the head of delegation for Mali. I agree with them that it beats the purpose and it achieves no purpose whatsoever. Malawi, you have the floor. Thank you very much, co-president, for the opportunity accorded to Malawi to contribute onto this uh, matter. Uh, co-president, first of all, Kenya has raised the a substantive question which has not yet been fully addressed. And the question was, with the new setup, what ill or vice is it intending to cure which was in the old setup? And secondly, the, the verbatim coming from the high table is that these matters were already concluded and discussed upon by the executive. I will respond as a, a lawmaker. First of all, just because something has been done, if it is wrong, it is wrong and it must be corrected. Secondly, the executive, they are accountable unto the people that elected them. And we are the representatives of those people. On a matter of this kind, a lot of parliaments, they are not comfortable. And I am wondering why do we seem to be so much rushing that we don't want to give we to give a chance to the voices of reason that are coming from the parliament, which are representing the people that ushered in the executive. What we are seeing, some of us, is that Europe wants to dominate the interface with the regions. And at the same time, it is very clear that the intention is to weaken the ACP as a block. I give the floor this time to Uganda. Thank you, co-president. Co-president, it's my first time to come here. And it's very sad I've come at a time when I'm witnessing the burial of SCP. I don't know whether it was intended that I attend only once and it stops there. Because when I read what has been decided and uh, we are told we are just being informed, then I'm going to summon my minister when I reach in Uganda. He must appear before parliament and explain what was his position on this matter. Number two, this, I don't know whether Europe was scared of Africa, Caribbean, and, uh, and the Pacific being together. Because only Europe will remain the only constant in all this. Now, we were benefiting, learning from each other as Caribbean, as Pacific, as Africa. We are running from each other. Now you've denied us that opportunity. Other parliamentary organizations, other parliamentary forums are getting stronger. We are weakening SCP EU. What's the problem? So to me, I believe we must go back. We revise this, even if it means us going and engaging our presidents, because these ministers whom you're firing to are approved by parliaments. We didn't approve them to come and weaken parliaments. So we need this forum. And I urge my colleagues, if they refuse, then for us, we can have ours informally. I'm going to urge my parliament in Uganda, we shall pay, we shall do a new structure of SCP, where we shall be meeting in our own way and we shall fund ourselves. So, but I urge our European colleagues, please talk to your people, talk to leaders in Africa. You would want to meet us when we are together, not when we are balkanizing. The Honorable Gladys Cholet, Deputy Speaker of the Republic of Kenya, asserted the supervisory role and oversight role of the Kenyan Parliament over its ambassadors and over its ministers. In fact, indicating that if the Kenyan minister was part of the decision to split 
the regional assembly, then they would be subject to impeachment. Kenya. But I just want to inform this assembly because you have severally mentioned that this decision was taken by the executive and that our hands are tied. I must tell you, the executive is accountable to us as parliament. The, the executive is oversighted by us as parliament. Those ministers act in the good for, of the people whom we represent. And so I can confirm to you that if the minister of Kenya signed this, then we shall recall him. We can have him impeached. I have the power and my parliament has the power to impeach that minister, to recall that ambassador and send him home. Thank you. I give the floor now to Sierra Leone. Let me join my colleague from Kenya. You know, I am the leader of government business in my country. In section 118 of my constitution, you cannot domesticate any document if it's not ratified by parliament. Check our constitution. So what you are doing, the ambassadors, you are putting them in trouble. Telling the executive or dictator people's representatives, we are elected, we are not appointed. Your ambassador you signed with was appointed by parliament, uh, by president, approved by parliament. That is democracy. We are talking about separation of powers. We have the executive, you have the, 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 the judiciary, and you have the legislative. How can you say putting us in the foot of the executive? We are responsible to ratify the document, responsible to approve them. The president, we can call him to answer questions in certain parliament. The ministers can face question time in parliament, but you cannot call a parliamentary to answer questions to the executive. It's unlawful in our country. The constitution cannot accept that. This document, tell our ambassadors, we have no business to be here if you are telling us to listen to the executive. We now move on to Jamaica. Jamaica, you have the floor. Mr. President, EU, the European Union, the word union tells you that they are together. Why is it that you want to divide us, put us in Caribbean, put us in Pacific, put us in Africa? It is not right, Mr. President. It is not right because we must be as one. We came here as one. The people, our, our colleagues before us, our colleagues before us knew very well why it was important for us to be as one. Why is it that we want to divide us? Mr. President, Mr. Co-President, you are now reminding me what is happening here today is reminding me of slavery. When the field slave were, were divided from the whole slave and so they get the chance to rule. Mr. President, we must have a voice. And today I'm saying to us, let us move away from it. And if, if we are only here as parliamentarian to rub a stamp, what our ministers have done, then it means that we should just get to the end of this meeting and let us go our way. Because Mr. President, divide and rule is wrong.